Erica Ariel Fox teaches at Harvard Law School, is a McKinsey and Company senior advisor, New York Times best-selling author, LinkedIn influencer, and has been published in Forbes, Harvard Business Review, Bloomberg, McKinsey Quarterly, and the Huffington Post. Erica has also been featured on Fox News and HuffPost Live. She's a trusted advisor to top teams in Fortune 100 companies and a founding partner of a professional services firm for senior leaders. I want to focus with you not on all the ways you can negotiate with other people, although many do that internally and externally, but actually give you a quick map of how to think about ways you negotiate with yourself. Um, because that, in many ways, is the foundation for how effective you will be negotiating with anyone else, whether that's someone on your team, whether that's an outside potential partner, whether that's your spouse or child. Let's just imagine Stacy wants part of my budget. Stacy wants some of my team, and I think I really need them, but she thinks she needs them even more. We're against each other. It's like a war. Imagine stepping to the same side. Stacy and I together could face this problem. Well, in theory, that's a really good idea, but actually, Stacy is my problem. We think that the people that we're dealing with are the problem. Doing an exercise that involved one instructor and three delegates, one of the people in my trio was a Supreme Court justice. And I probably had graduated law school about five minutes earlier. I came in the next day, probably at the time quite nervous, asking him about his chosen challenge. And he looked at me, like Terry is now, calmly and said, I'd like to ask my wife to stop picking out my tie. I think I would probably have asked what any of you would ask. Have you ever asked her not to do that? <laughs> no, he said, that's exactly my problem. I cannot bring myself to ask her to stop picking out my tie. Something on the inside, something within him, was getting in his way from using tools and skills I think we're safe to say he probably has. When I first moved in with my husband, I realized that little kids wake up earlier than adults. <laughs> and my little stepson would come into our room, you know, started in a sort of civil way at 7 in the morning, then it would be 6.30, started to be 6 o'clock, and I felt like, you know, I'm not really sure this is totally working for me. Um, so I asked my husband to brainstorm if there was some kind of system we could put in place. We bought him a little clock, and the clock is attached to a light. And when the clock says, you're laughing because you know this doesn't work. So when the clock says 7 a.m., the light goes on, right? So my husband explained to him, you know, sweetie, when the light goes on, that's when you can come in the room. So the next morning... 5.30 in the morning, in he comes, he starts shaking us, and my husband says, what's up, buddy? And in his sweet little voice, he says, the light is broken. A term that is being kicked around a lot in these circles lately is the term of multiplicity. And it means we ourselves are made up of many different interconnecting parts. We aren't a single, solitary, unitary me. We have many, many, many voices. They play different roles in our lives. They equip us to do different skills. Everyone in this room has a part of yourself that is designed to think analytically, that's your thinker, to connect with people emotionally, that's the lover, to dream and muse and imagine about the future, the dreamer, and the warrior that is designed to take action. Your brain is also designed to support these different functions. Many people, including senior leaders, including CEOs, have started to overuse one or two of these and underuse one or two of them as well. It will be hard for you to be super successful at the skills that belong to an inner negotiator that you have shut out. It's tempting to say to yourself, oh, that's easy, I know I'm a dreamer or I know I'm a thinker. 
It could be true that you're very good at the uh, dreamer or thinker skills, but you do have all of these inside of you. Winning from within came about in my work and in my research in part because of my experience that many people, and I include myself, many very successful people, professional people, people who've raised six children, don't actually experience ourselves as truly free. We don't feel free often in the workplace to express emotion because we have a story in our head that that will undermine us. We don't feel free to dream because a voice in our head tells us we can't afford it. Negotiation in this sense really means the moment to moment experience you have. Every time you are trying to influence someone or they're trying to influence you. Every time you are trying to reach consensus or resolve conflict or pursue an opportunity. The idea that if people know what they want, they can represent themselves at the table. So I actually think the Jekyll and Hyde comment is really important. It's very easy to judge any of these four or any profile that you have. I feel really strongly that there aren't good and bad members of the big four. You can use any of them really destructively. <laughs> you can also use any of them really constructively. What if I'm the problem? I am the problem. I'm getting in my own way. I can blame all my crazy coworkers. I can blame my direct reports who aren't accountable. I can blame my husband. You can close your performance gap as you learn to negotiate with yourself first. The most important negotiations in your life that determine the impact your work will have, the quality of relationships you have with people, and I would say the deeper fulfillment that you experience, your ability to capture and enjoy more of life's deeper rewards will all come from learning to understand yourself and how to negotiate with yourself in order to work effectively with everyone else. I am getting in my own way because I know what to do. I don't need more tools and techniques. I need to understand in what way is something inside of me preventing me from using skillful behavior. So I call that dynamic the performance gap. Negotiate with yourself first. And my belief is that as you become more knowledgeable and skillful at the internal negotiation, you will start to see those gaps start to close. Will we embrace the challenge of self-discovery and self-development in order to close the very real performance gaps we have in our world, at home, in the world, at work, and everywhere we live. It's a big question. Will we undertake to understand ourselves deeply, stop blaming other people, and recognize we get in our own way? Will we step up to the challenge of learning enough about how we operate and taking seriously the developmental opportunities we have to make the world we live in better for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren? And I very much hope that the answer to that question is yes.